Greetings wherever you are. Uh, this is episode 13 of Corporate Law Channel and my name is uh, Matthew Zokot. Uh, this is uh, the second part of a recording I started in episode 12 on the legal regime uh, governing the uh, foreign direct investments in Kenya with uh, a special case study of China Square Mall. Now, in episode 12, we looked at uh, the background story of uh, this matter and also highlighted the first obligation that Kenya has under a treaty that it has with uh, China on foreign investments by Chinese nationals in Kenya. Now, uh, the, that first obligation was the freedom of establishment. We explained what it is and its technical sense as the presence of a regulatory framework that uh, governs the admission and establishment of those businesses. Now, uh, just to continue from that uh, episode 12, uh, the story that uh, formed the context of our discussion actually has a report that indeed there was um, a compliance uh, with the process for establishment by this Chinese uh, uh, investor. Uh, part of the story reports that uh, the Kenya-China Chambers of Commerce uh, confirms that uh, China Square had followed all necessary legal procedures before establishing the business. So that is part of the, you know, the requirement for establishment. Uh, it concerns things like the license, the, the licensing, for instance, the, that the, does this uh, Chinese national have an investment certificate to operate the business? Do they have the business permits? Yeah, so uh, from the from the from the story item, uh, it is reported that indeed there was uh, compliance with with the requirement for establishment. Now uh, the the second obligation under the treaty is what is called uh, a national treatment uh, principle. And what this uh, principle states is that uh, if there is any standard of treatment that Kenya accords its uh, nationals, then that standard of treatment should actually apply to the foreign nationals as well. That is a general rule. And when we talk of the standard uh, uh, treatment, we are talking of a standard of treatment in respect of, uh, in respect, for instance, of um, you know the management of these uh, uh, business. If, for instance, in future, these are, you know, Chinese national wants to dispose of its assets, the, the same way that, uh, you know, the Kenyan regulatory from, framework would have allowed for the disp disposal of those assets should actually also apply to uh, foreign uh, investors that are in the country. Now, the third obligation is, uh, <clears throat> is called uh, uh, a most favored nation treatment. Now, most favored nation treatment concerns standards of treatment among nationals of various foreign countries. For instance, here we are talking of a story item by uh, a Chinese, uh, concerning a Chinese investor. Now, uh, if, if for instance, it were to be demonstrated that perhaps the treatment of the Chinese investor uh, is not similar to you know, the treatment of another national, then there would be uh, on a prima facie basis, there would be a presumed breach of the treaty obligation under the most favored nation principle. So whatever treatment that Kenya chooses to accord, one foreign national, uh, in respect of the category of businesses in issue, like here we are talking of a retail uh, business, then it should actually accord the same treatment uh, to also these uh, the nationals of this particular nation, which is uh, which is which is China. Now, more critical to to me because uh, it was a it was a you know it was a, a further news item uh, yesterday on twenty eighth of February is the obligation of Kenya to protect to secure you know the investments of these foreign nationals. So protection and security obligation. And here is the obligation of the, the host nation has an obligation to protect the physical integrity of the assets, right? Of these foreign nationals. Uh, and what are they being protected from? 
demonstrators. We, if you followed uh, the news item yesterday, if you followed the, the news yesterday, you will agree with me that uh, there was some attempt yesterday, 28th of February, 2023, uh, by you know some local traders to demonstrate, you know, uh, and it was uh, by, all by all measures a major demonstration. Now, uh, luckily, there was really no adverse effect arising from the demonstration. It was a peaceful demonstration. Now, the obligation of the state is to ensure that notwithstanding these lawful demonstrations, there is no adverse consequence that a, a foreign investor suffers arising from them. Uh, the security may also is also uh, imposed uh, to be provided against uh, actions of, uh, you know, called rented tax or other forms of civil, you know, disturbances that may affect the physical integrity of the assets. Now, there is uh, another obligation under the treaty, which is a limited light, a right of, right of uh, expropriation. And when you talk of expropriation, here we, we, we talk of uh, nationalization, you know, nationalization of assets of a foreign national, in, uh, of a foreign nation. So uh, if, if, for instance, uh, and I think this arises from the, from the news item itself, uh, where we read that uh, there's actually, uh, there was an, an intention by a cabinet secretary uh, to request a vice chancellor of a, a university to take over the lease of this uh, Chinese square mall and give it to local traders. That is an act of, in fact, that's a very, uh, an act of direct expropriation because that lease forms part of the asset of this Chinese investor, right? Now, not, not all forms of uh, expropriation are, are direct. They are what we call creeping acts of expropriation. If, for instance, uh, circum legal, legal circumstances for doing business in a country changes in a way that uh, it erodes the benefits uh, that the foreign national in that particular sector anticipated to get. That is also considered expropriation. It's, a, it's an indirect form of expropriation or what are called the creeping acts of expropriation. Uh, or just form of harassment by you know, government agency that makes it very difficult for a foreign national to operate optimally uh, in a host country. And when I read the news item, one of the one of the matters that stood out for me, just to illustrate this point, is the uh, notwithstanding the you know the, the, the legitimacy and, and, and the, the, the good faith uh, in this process, uh, the, the, it may be construed that uh, because of the timing of some of these uh, investigations, uh, it amounts to it's, it may be arguable that it may amount to a creeping act of expropriation, a form of harassment or intimidation of a foreign national. And this is the reported ongoing investigation uh, by anti-counterfeit agency over claims of dealings in counterfeit products by, the, by Chinese Square Mall. It is reported in that news item that uh, anti-counterfeit agency is actually uh, in the process of doing some investigation in respect of uh, in respect of the dealings in some products by Chinese uh, Square Mall, so those are called creeping acts. Now it is not that uh, you can't nationalize. You, it's not that you can't nationalize uh, assets of a foreign nation. There are limited circumstances when that can happen, right? Uh, but there are certain uh, you know, there are certain uh, legal requirements that must be fulfilled for that form of expropriation to be considered valid. First, it must be for a public cause. Now, pub meaning that uh, the beneficiary of the expropriation must be the public at large. Uh, and it is therefore debatable, for instance, when we read that a cabinet secretary is advocating for you know, a takeover of a lease for the benefit of some private traders, it is debatable whether those private traders constitute the general public, you know, that would, you know, uh, so that that process would fulfill the first requirement that uh, it is in the public interest at large, right? 
because these local traders in the you know the category of the beneficiaries of that lease they are identified and they're just private they are private uh, businessmen or business people all right so uh, expropriation can happen but the first principle to satisfy is that it must be in for the benefit of the public secondly uh, it should not be discriminatory it should not be based on some considerations other than lawful purposes right so if for instance uh, it can be demonstrated that the whole intention of the expropriation uh, is triggered by the nationality of an individual then it may be argued that uh, that form of expropriation is not valid the other consideration is that the expropriation must be preceded by full compensation so you cannot for instance take over the lease before compensation if you intend to take over the, the lease then there must be full compensation meaning at the market rates right uh, before the act can be valid so what happens in the event that uh, there is a conflict like we said from the beginning in episode 12 uh, foreign investors are entitled to access uh, our court system locally but because of the perception that uh, you know the perhaps the local redress dispute redress mechanism may not be in their favor there is an additional layer uh, of uh, dispute resolution under the treaty right so in this particular treaty between the investment treaty between kenya and china uh, the, 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 there is a provision for access of an international tribunal which is called uh, the international center for settlement of this, of investment disputes now and and whoever triggers this of course is any party meaning either kenya or or china can trigger that process if they are persuaded that perhaps their their national is uh, is, is is being if, if for instance china you know considers that their national is being uh, mistreated right but before you reach there 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 are steps that are to be followed there needs to be good faith negotiation for at least six months uh, uh, if there is no good faith negotiation that is when uh, a party they, if they if the good faith negotiation does not result into any settlement that is when access may be uh, had uh, to this international tribunal uh, which is called exit or an ad hoc tribunal parties may agree on an ad hoc tribunal you know to resolve uh, their dispute so that that actually summarizes the the regime on um, that governs uh, you know, foreign direct investments in kenya uh, like we mentioned uh, crucially there are there are, there are two layers of protection one of the layers is as provided for under our local uh, framework another layer is pursuant to a treaty between the country of origin of this foreign investor and the host country all these as i mentioned is uh, discussed in my book uh, in chapter 2025 20, uh, of this book from page 557 this book we said is available or you can order it online on ml publishers website or you can simply walk to ml publishers offices in the lamea flats uh, suit uh, d d31 so thank you again for listening to me and uh, uh, for continued comments on this channel. Bye-bye for now.